So today we're going to learn how to do a t-test in RStudio. This is a raw data set of actual data that I collected about how long it took hagfish to get knocked out using two different types of, or I'm sorry, two different doses of anesthesia. So induction time is the time that it took to reach unconsciousness. Then we had both low and high doses of clove oil anesthesia. And you'll see that I have chosen to separate the categorical variables from the numeric variables in this particular data set. This is the way that I prefer to structure my data, where each numeric variable or value has a corresponding category. I go ahead and open up our studio, open up a brand new script window, and then I'm gonna set my working directory, which is always our first step when we open up our studio. I locate my working directory, make sure that my .csv file is in there, which it is. And then I'm going to write myself a note just so that the next time I open up this file, I know the first thing I need to do is set my working directory. Again, anytime you use the hashtag, R is not going to interpret that as code. It's just a note to yourself. Write as few or as many notes as you want. Then I'm going to import a data set here, one that I am going to call anesthesia. I'm going to use the read.csv function, type in the saved file name, which is hagfish underscore induction .csv. I'm going to write header equals true because the first row in that data set contains the categorical information about the data underneath. And of course, the separator is a comma. Get this anesthesia data set in there, take a quick look at it, make sure everything looks okay. Indeed, it does. So the next thing I need to do is load up the ggplot2 library. Again, libraries are kind of like programs within a program, and ggplot2 is fantastic for making graphs. So I call that library by typing in that code that is on line 8, hitting run, and now we are good to go. And of course, because we are running a statistical test, we need to go through the four steps of hypothesis testing. And the first thing we need to do is state your null and alternative hypotheses. So for a t-test, the null hypothesis is that there is no mean difference or no difference in mean response variable, in this case, induction time, between the different categories of our explanatory variable, which in this case are high and low doses or concentrations of clove oil anesthesia which, just as an FYI, is a really commonly used anesthetic for fishes. Our alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in response variable or mean induction time between our explanatory variables, which are high and low concentrations of anesthesia. So because we're running a t-test, we need to make a few more decisions before we can set up our statistical code in R. We first need to decide if this is a one-sided or a two-sided test. Because we're simply interested in answering the question, is there a difference between mean induction time between high and low doses of clove oil, there's really no directionality that it's implied. Therefore, we can say with confidence that this is a two-sided test. By the way, two-sided, two-tailed, one-sided, one-tailed mean the same thing. The next thing we need to decide if this is a two-sample or a paired t-test. I would argue that this is absolutely a two-sample t-test because the hagfish that were used in the low concentration anesthesia trials and those in the high concentration anesthesia trials were completely different animals. They constitute statistically independent samples. So now we know we're running a two-sample t-test that is two-sided. Let's go ahead and graph the data using ggplot, of course. You know I love box plots, so here's the code to do that. First, of course, you need to call the ggplot function.
And again, you'll see that I'm writing myself copious notes here. You can write yourself as few or as many notes as you want, as long as you use the hashtag or the pound symbol. So calling ggplot, we first need to list the data set that we're gonna use to build the graph, which is called anesthesia. We're gonna type in some aesthetics. We're going to let ggplot know that our x variable or our explanatory variable is called concentration. So we type that in and then a comma and let it know our y variable or our response variable, which is induction time. So that's our numeric variable in this particular question. Then we need to let ggplot know we want it to make a box plot and that we want it to remove the gray backgrounds and grid marks using the theme underscore classic function. Go ahead and hit run, and we get this nice little box plot. And you can see it does seem that there is quite a difference in induction time between the two levels of concentration used in this experiment. So let's hop back to hypothesis testing. Step two is actually calculating our test statistic, which in this case is our t-value. A t-test uses a t-test statistic and a t-distribution, specifically a student's t-distribution. So if we want to know a little bit more about how to run a t-test in R, down in the console, we can write question mark t.test, and a bunch of information is going to come up about the syntax or the arguments that you need to construct a t-test within the R environment. Now, because we're setting up a pretty straightforward t-test here, a lot of these we're not going to use. But the basics, the guts of any t-test, are what we're going to go over today. So first, what we need to write in, and for some reason my cursor just isn't working right now, <laughs> give it a second. Okay, we're back in business. So within the t-test, we first need to write the response variable, induction time, and then ask it to do a t-test in relation to our explanatory variable, which is concentration. So again, induction time is our y, or our response variable, and concentration is our x, or our explanatory variable. And then we need to let R know which data set we're going to be using, which in this case is called anesthesia. We then need to type in a few more arguments. We need the var.equals to equal true. One of the assumptions of kind of the entry level student's t-test is that the variance in our two samples are equal. For the sake of this particular test, we are going to assume that they are indeed equal and write in true. And then last but certainly not least, we need to write in paired equals false because we are running a two sampled test. If you're running a paired t-test, you would write paired equals true. So let's go ahead and run this line of code and see what pops down here in the console. Let's go through this line by line. First and foremost, you see the code that we typed up here in line 28 of our script. We get confirmation that R did indeed run a run-of-the-mill two-sample t-test. We have our t-statistic, our test statistic in this case, which is negative 19.34. We have our degrees of freedom, which is based on not only our sample size, but also the number of categories we have. And we also have our p-value which will allow us to either reject or fail to reject our original null hypothesis. R also tells you what alternative hypothesis was being tested based on the code that you gave it. Now that's gonna change um, depending on a few things that a future video will cover. You don't need to worry about the confidence intervals, but the last line here is that R actually calculates the mean induction time for both of our two groups. Kind of handy. So I'm going to go back up to our script here. And for step two of hypothesis testing, we calculated our test statistic, our t value, which is negative 19.34. 
Go ahead and double check the test statistics table that we went over in class for the proper and full format that you need to use to report both your T and your p-value for a two-sampled, two-sided t-test. Step three of hypothesis testing is to state your p-value, which again, you get directly from the code. In this case, it's 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 16th. And then of course, step four is stating your conclusion. Now, of course, on an exam or a problem set, you can just write these answers directly into your answer sheet but I'm writing them all as notes within the code of this particular set or this particular script. So again, when we are stating our conclusions, we always want to state our conclusion based on our p-value within the context of our null hypothesis. So you always need to let your reader know what your null hypothesis is and whether you reject the null hypothesis or you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in our case, because we have such a low p-value, less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis, which again, I'm scrolling up to our original statement here, that there is no difference in mean induction time between high and low concentrations of clove oil anesthesia. You wanna be really precise in this step um, to make sure that your conclusions make sense within the context of your overall test 